So with the rise of tools like ChatGPT, how does that play into data security and generative AI within the data integration space? This one is a doozy. I'll have to say that right now, it is the wild, wild west out there when it comes to generative AI and what it can do and what it can't do. And from my experience, there are so many possible use cases that are out there and they all sound awesome and they look great. It's just really hard to tie it to a tact like tactical use case right now and be sure that our data is secure and it is not being compromised and it is not being trained on for if I wanted it to be trained on or how I wanted to use it going forward. So right now we're looking a lot into kind of the code generation use space, right? It's, hey, we're going to go out there. We're going to use tools like GitHub Copilot and Code Whisper from AWS. How can it help us write code faster, which can hopefully generate our data faster so we can get things out the door. The hard part, especially from an SMB perspective, is like the cost of play is really, really high right now. You can get in, but then like, you're basically signing a waiver that says, hey, they can train and learn off of all your data from day one. Are you okay with that? And most small businesses are going to say, no, like I definitely don't want to do that right now because I don't know how you're using it. I don't know what it will be used for. And are there legal implications by doing so, whether it's from a license perspective or a security perspective? What, what is the quality of the generative AI that is coming out? These are really hard things to measure right now. And, and kudos to the people that are leading it because they understand this and they're trying to track it going forward. But it's really, really hard to dig into right now. I'm curious to hear like your thoughts on this. No, I agree. Doozy is a good word. I think there's a lot of hype. And there's also a lot of magic, which is weird. It's a strange mix of if anybody who tries to work with ChatGPT, or at least these sort of public generic versions of it, of generative AI, knows that more often than not, it's actually not quite good. It's, it's close. It, we do a lot of marketing work with it as well. But I've, I've had situations where I'll tell it something and then I'll ask a question to, to have it generate key bullets or something like that. And it'll just make something up. And so now you're sitting there going... What just happened? Um, and then you realize one of the terms you used was a very common name and it didn't connect the previous data. So these types of easy mistakes make it really unpredictable and really difficult to lean on in terms of actually doing anything productive tactical, as uh, Jason was saying. But on the other side, it does some insane things and, and there's a number of I've been working with, uh, I know several startups actually that are in the data and AI space. There's a company um, that I'm aware of. It's really, they're working on something really cool. They're working on uh, generative AI prompts that then just magically build out automation in, in multiple tools uh, from a DevOps and, and infrastructure perspective, which I have no idea how that's going to work. I just think that's an amazing idea. And then there's this really cool, it's not data integration, but just like to give you a sense of like how amazing these things can be. There's another startup, um, the really amazing Loveless Studios, uh, you guys should check them out, that they use generative AI prompts to create entire virtual reality or RPG style game universes for, for people to explore. And so that's not data integration necessarily, but it gives you an idea of there's just magic there it's that we, we're not entirely sure how it works. We just know it does. And I'm sure some people do, but I'm not one of them. I don't know the details. I'm technical enough to be dangerous with it. So point of all of that is like just said, it's the wild west. There's a bunch of stuff that definitely doesn't work. There's a bunch of stuff that blows you away. And so the real question is, what do you do with this? And I think that the best answer right now is probably not a lot yet. Enjoy it and try to think of ways. And as it refines, it'll definitely become part of our day to day in a more concrete way. And I think, but this is the part that I'll say, I've explained a somewhat conservative, eh, it's not that big a deal perspective. And the thing is that I don't actually feel that way. It's coming. Like we're, we're going to figure it out and it's going to get better and better. And one day, you know, we'll be able to point um, an AI solution at a random data stream in UE streams, and it'll be able to tell us everything about that data. I don't think that's today, but sure. 
I can absolutely see that happening. Or you point it toward a company and their documents and it'll code for you the exact integration you need in order to do something. We're not that far away from that. In fact, I think Google's working on something similar to that right now. So those things are absolutely coming and it's going to completely change how we think about the effort involved, the value proposition of integration solutions and, and how these things go. And it's going to reinforce some of the points we've made earlier that you have to be able to do these things. And up until now, they were really hard to do, but you still had to figure out a way to do it. And now it's going to become easier and easier to do it. So there won't even be any more excuses to survive, to grow. You will have to be able to integrate. Um, and it's the same mission that United Effects is on, which is we want to bring these technologies down for multi-billion dollar enterprises and make them more accessible and easier to use. These technologies are going to do that as well. So we're on the same team in that respect, I think. Yeah. It's another tool in the toolbox right now, and you better sharpen it because it's going to come and let's be prepared for it because it's going to do some fantastic things for us in the world. That's for sure. We're scary. <laughs> yeah. That's the other part of this. One of the reasons I think, and I'd be curious if there's more data on this, but it has occurred to me that with the rise of ChatGPT and these sort of um, solutions out there also seem to be coinciding with a pretty dramatic rise in cybersecurity attacks and um, just general phishing attempts and all sorts of strange things. Like I've been doing this for 20 years. I've never seen anything like, you know, my inbox is full every day of this stuff, which is crazy. We're not so big that somebody is like targeting us. So I'm guessing this is a pretty um, ubiquitous thing. And it occurs to me that you can probably just ask ChatGPT how to do some of this stuff <laughs> and it'll tell you. And so that's the other side of this coin. Yes, data integration, data analysis, data-based AI. These are some amazing things that are coming, but as when that gets easy, so does the other stuff. And so I think that's going to be the real tricky part. And Jason alluded to this is, do you want to share your data with that when it's becoming so easy to, to manipulate? And I don't know. I don't know how that's going to shift right now. Yeah, it's going to be crazy. Not only from the security aspect, but from the legal aspect as well. I bet you, like, we're going to yeah. go through a big legal shift in how we license software going forward. And you can already see it. There's already lawsuits that are out there from using some of these uh, large language models. Yeah, more to come.